I found these trees at my local Target store last Halloween. They were $5 a piece, so I bought a few. The trees come with this weighted base to them, but you can easily pull the tree part out. And that's the part that we're going to use to make our trees for our toy photography. I got some PVC pipe. It's half inch diameter. You can buy a, uh, some from any local home improvement uh, place. Um, I do have a PVC pipe cutter. Uh, they're not too expensive. Uh, there are there are other ways to cut PVC pipe, but you want to cut a piece that's um, to the height of the trunk of the tree that you want to make. Um, depending on how tall you want it and what scale figures you're using, you may want to make it a little taller or maybe even a little shorter than what I did in this video. I ended up cutting out a somewhere about a four and a half, five inch piece of PVC pipe. So you can see that the half inch PVC pipe is about the same diameter as the part of the tree that we're sticking into it. Uh, however, it doesn't look very tree-like, nor does it stand up very well. So we're going to remedy that by using a hot glue gun. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive as well. I suggest using a large glue stick. Um, hot glue gun, you can buy them with that use the small glue sticks but since we're going to be using quite a bit of hot glue I do suggest using the large one um, you want to start at the top of course and glue the tree uh, top part to the trunk that we made um, you want to apply quite a bit you want it to be nice and snug in there and you can even start a little above where the two meet to kind of make it flow texture wise uh, from one part to the other and of course we're we can fix that later on but you want to go ahead and start that process and then as you glue that in there just kind of let it dry it should dry uh, fairly quickly or cool off I should say um, and then once it gets in there a little more snug then you can actually work on creating the uh, trunk kind of texture uh, we want to coat the whole thing and a good amount of glue uh, so that we can add a more texture look of like tree bark to it. Next, we're going to be adding some roots coming out of the bottom. This not only adds a little stability, but it makes it look a little more realistic. Uh, it's kind of unrealistic for some trees to not have roots kind of coming out of the side a little bit. Next time you're out for a walk, look at trees. They tend to have some roots that kind of go out at the base of the trunk. Um, this, again, adds a little stability to it as well. Uh, don't worry too much about if if they don't look too realistic right now the advantage of hot glue is you can reshape it a little bit plus we'll be adding texture and stuff so go ahead and add about four or five little roots spurting out from it um, and just again be careful of the surface that you do this on you want to make sure it's some kind of surface that you can easily peel it up from uh, something slick and plastic is the way to go Unfortunately, this particular cutting board proved later on, as you'll see in the video, a little bit of a bad decision as a surface to put it on. Here I'm taking one of the branches that seemed like it was a little loose, like it was going to fall off anyway. So I went ahead and cut that 
off and then I'm going to use hot glue to glue it back onto the tree in a slightly different place where I felt like there was kind of uh, some branches missing. You do want to kind of cut it and make sure it's nice and flush so that it glues on uh, back onto the tree trunk uh, fairly snug. Uh, the glue, uh, you want to put a good amount on there and then kind of just make it look like a natural extension so you can kind of let the glue flow more tapered into the branch. Here I'm using uh, what's called a helping hand. You can buy these at Harbor Freight fairly cheap. Uh, they're little alligator clips on some armature that is used to hold stuff into place. Um, so I'm going to hold that branch there so the glue can, has a chance to uh, cool off and harden. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the next step. Once the initial roots that you added there have hardened and cooled off a little bit, you want to go back and add a few more layers of it, just kind of enhance it, make it go out a little further. You'll have a hard time doing that all in one step, so you want to add two or three different layers to it. Once everything is cooled off and hardened, then you're ready to remove the tree from whatever base you're on. Again, here I did not make the best decision on which to do this particular tree. I've never done it on this particular cutting mat before. Uh, this cutting mat proved a little challenging to remove uh, the tree from. The hot glue bonded to it a little more than I anticipated. Um, in the past, I've used a, a, a more of a smooth, uh, glossy type cutting board that I got. Uh, it's kind of like those nylon sheets, really thin ones, and the glue did not stick to it nearly as much. So you'll see I'll need to break out a sharp uh, knife here, a little hobby knife to uh, remove the glue from the mat. I actually ended up damaging my cutting mat just a little bit. Uh, as always, anytime you're using something sharp like this, be really careful try to remember to cut away from you um, and just don't don't apply too much pressure because if it slips then it's going to go in places you don't want it to uh, do not you don't want to take a trip to the emergency room because you were careless with a hobby knife so just be very careful uh, cutting this and you you want to just basically start separating the glue from the mat and once you do that it, it will pop off uh, again, I had to struggle here a little bit with this one, but I did get it off okay. And here I'm going to compare the tree we're working on to one that I've completed previously. Uh, I do have a few more roots spurting out from the completed tree, but I wanted to show you kind of where we're at in the process versus the end product. Here's some pictures from when I worked on some of the previous ones I completed. And then here you're going to see what our next step is going to involve. We're going to end up using a actually a foam cutter tool that I have that has sort of like a wood burner tip to it. I imagine you could use a wood burner. Uh, those are not terribly expensive, but you can use that to add the texture. The look that we're going for is sort of the grain that runs down a uh, tree trunk, the bark. Um, there, there's different ways that you can do this. You can make it as fine lined as possible or you can hold the burner onto the glue part a little longer to make deeper grooves. Uh, you do want to be a little random. You don't want the lines to be a little too straight. Uh, you want them to be a little more like you see in nature where it's uh, sort of random and not too uniform and straight. You want it to be a little more random. Now, a quick note about this. You do want to make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. The window to the right I have open and I have the fan going on in the room. Not only that, I am wearing a mask, a ventilation mask. So I, as you can see, the fumes do come off of here. I'm not sure they're toxic, but I'm sure they're not really good for your body. So always uh, use protection whenever you're dealing with uh, fumes or anything like that. Uh, you can see that the wind is uh, just blowing it right out the window there. I am wearing a mask, like I said, that you can't see, obviously. So make sure you do have proper uh, equipment. Uh, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. Uh, you do want to take those kind of precautions. 
We'll go ahead and speed the video up as this is a little meticulous and repetitive. If you're wondering which brand foam cutter I'm using, it's a Winans, I think you say Winans. I'm not sure how you say that, but I got it off of Amazon fairly inexpensively. It does come with different tips to it. Uh, it comes with like a wide hot wire for foam cutting. This is a little bit like a wood burning tip. Uh, so that's what I'm using. Again, a wood burning tool probably will suffice for this, but I've never tried it. Here's one of the finished trees, so you can see how the texture that I'm burning into it uh, ends up looking. Here is a tree where I did something a little more creative with the roots coming out of it. I actually took a small piece of wire and I glued it out from about a few inches from the base and I bent it over into the ground area and then I just applied hot glue to it to form like a more of an extensive root sticking out of the side. The next step is you do want to apply a primer coat. I suggest doing black so that when you paint the actual textured part, the raised up part that leaves the crevices a black color. What color you end up painting the trees is up to you. I have some that are a gray color, others are more brown. You can even mix with different washes, like do a gray tree with a brown wash on it. You can just experiment and try to get the color that you want. Here are a few photos where I use the trees that I made. Thank you for viewing and be sure to follow so you can see more content like this. Check out my profile on Instagram for some toy photography. Have a good day.